It's Men's Mental Health Month. Which I wanted to talk about because it means a lot to me and I'm sure it means a lot to a lot of people. Now, Men's Mental Health Month unfortunately also falls on Pride Month. They both fall on the month of June. And I feel that there's a problem with that because it seems like everyone forgets that Men's Mental Health Month is there due to the fact of pride. I have nothing against pride. Me, myself, I'm a bisexual man. And I love the fact that people celebrate their sexuality. But we can't overlook the fact that men also suffer with mental health problems. Now, it's statistically proven that three times as three times as many men as there are women have depression now you could say that that isn't a good or that you could say that that isn't real or whatever it's what i'm it's what i know or not know but it's what i believe because three many three times as many men as women die by suicide men don't have enough people to talk to because men get told oh you're a man just man up don't talk about your emotions and that's a problem because it seems like the fact that when men try to talk up about their problems people ignore them but when a woman tries to talk up about their problems everyone is flooding in to try and see what's wrong and I don't believe that when it comes to mental health awareness there will ever be a healthy equality between how men and women are viewed because Stereotypical, stereotypically, men are viewed as the strong, no emotion fighters who are meant to stand up for their family and meant to stand up for everything. But that is not the case. Men suffer with depression and anxiety just as much as women do. And I have seen this firsthand. As to how the NHS seems to treat men for psychological therapies. Because it seems that men are less likely to have access to therapy than women do. Only 36% of referrals to therapists are for men. And when men don't have... an outlet maybe to talk about what they do it's a lot harder for them to stay stable seeing as you've we've people have seen people have been seen turning to drugs alcohol violence none of these are the right option always find someone you can talk to because Sooner or later, using alcohol, drugs and violence will get you to a place where you do not want to be. And I know firsthand the effects of violence. I was a very angry person. I've fractured my wrist. Well, not fractured. I, f I think I fractured my wrist at one point because I used to get so angry that I'd punch holes in my wall. And that wasn't good. So I opened up to people. I tried to get help. I'm still waiting to get help. But that's just the economy we live in, which I'm not going to... That's a whole other thing to talk about. And you could say that I don't really know what I'm talking about. You're just an 18-year-old boy who's sat down with a camera trying to talk about his own experiences. Now, 
I know everyone has different experiences. Some people are scared to open up. But we shouldn't have to be scared. That's the problem. It's the fact that men are scared to open up because they get told we shouldn't they, they shouldn't have emotions. And it's that stuff that really ticks me off. Because when we're told we shouldn't have emotions, we shut everything off. We shut everyone out. And it seems to be getting worse and worse nowadays due to the fact of more people are becoming depressed, more people are getting anxiety. And it seems like people aren't talking about it enough because we have all these different speak speakers, I don't know, that go around to schools, colleges, and all that stuff to talk about mental health. But no one actually asks the real questions. Like, you don't, no one will ask someone who is going through that stuff, do you need my help? Because they don't want to help. Because it seems like once you start helping someone who's struggling with their mental health, that you start to recognize that you are also struggling a bit because people are scared to face the truth when it comes to this sort of stuff. Now, I know it's different for some people. Some people aren't scared to go around asking for help and I'm glad for them. Well done. You got you have gotten the help you wanted but i don't think many people will actually what what's the word i'm looking for i don't think many people will actually consider the fact that men stereotypically are meant to be the breadwinners are meant to be the strong people and I know I just said that but it it's the truth it's the hard truth that people don't listen to and uh, you have all these people on YouTube and Twitch and Twitter TikTok I, I don't know saying like oh if you're a man with anxiety don't expect me to help you you got a man up for yourself blah 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 and I'm not saying that it's I'm not, I don't want to justify what they're saying because it's not true. You don't, you can show your emotions. You don't have to just sit there and wallow, wallow? I don't know what the word is. You don't just have to sit there and suffer on your own. There are people you can talk to. We have the Good Samaritans, the you have suicide hotlines and all that stuff to help you and it just it seems like people see these options but just say no i don't want help i can deal with this on my own this sort of stuff you can't deal with alone now i'm not saying find someone to use as a crutch no don't do that Because then you become codependent on someone always being there for you and it's the hard truth that that person isn't always going to be there for you. Now everyone has their own comfort people. For me, it's my two best friends. For other people, it could be their siblings, their cousins, their parents. And those comfort people are the people we talk to the most about this sort of stuff. And I don't feel, when it comes to me, I don't feel scared to open up to my best friends. Because I know they won't judge me. They won't say that I'm faking and all that stuff. Another thing I wanted to talk about was imposter syndrome. 
Now, imposter syndrome is where you don't feel you're actually worthy enough. Worthy? I don't know. But you don't actually feel like you act, you should have depression or anxiety because nothing's happened to you. I have imposter syndrome. I My depression and anxiety doesn't come from trauma. I have no clue where it came from. But sometimes I feel that I have imposter syndrome and it brings me down a lot because I'll, I could be sitting there thinking trying to figure out what it is that I need to get help for and I could just sit there and think there's nothing worth there's nothing worth actually asking for help for because nothing's happened to me but I know that that isn't the way I should be thinking now, it's very tricky to talk about this kind of stuff because you can get people coming at you saying, oh, but that's not actually how this works and stuff like that. Everyone has their own opinions and thoughts on how mental health is. Now, I want to talk about the fact that People don't say that there's a difference between a man having depression and a woman having depression because there is. It's only a small difference, but it can include irritability, sudden anger, loss of control, risk taking, and a lot of aggression, which isn't the right way to go. Like I said before, don't use violence as an outlet. Unless it's going to be the sort of violence that, what is it, hmm. the sort of violence that you're going to take out on a punching bag per se, like boxing, karate, judo, jiu-jitsu, all of that stuff. If you're going to use that as an outlet, then that's, accept that's an acceptable way of using violence as an outcome because you're not actually hurting yourself or another person. Now, if you're if you are concerned about a friend or a family member with mental health problems, there are things you can do to help them. You can let them know that you are listening, like without giving judgment. You can reach out to them. A phone call or a text message can make a massive difference in someone's day and there's a lot of things that actually help now I don't know most of them I'll have to do my own research but yeah there's a lot of things you can do to help I will be putting uh, what are they called links to the Samaritans to sites where you can read up on mental health and helplines in the description of this video and if you are struggling and you do not know how to get help you can I'd like to say please reach out to one of those places and if you don't want to reach out to one of those places because they are a complete stranger and you don't trust talking to them then I say you can reach out to me because I would be there for anyone. I was considered the therapist friend in school and stuff like that. That's another thing, therapist friends. Everyone are, goes to one particular friend for advice and they are known as what is the therapist friend because they're the ones that give the best advice. Now, the therapist friend isn't always actually going to have the energy to help, but they will still help. And the way I, reason I say that they won't always have the energy is because, if you think about it, where's, where are they getting the advice from? Advice comes from experience. Mistakes that someone made. Advice is mistakes that someone made 
to be able to help you. And I feel that that is overlooked a lot as well. But yeah, anyway. Happy Men's Mental Health Month. Happy Pride Month. If you're struggling, you can reach out to me. To the links in the description. Or just reach out to anyone. And even if you're not struggling, please reach out to someone you think might be. Because that can go a lot, long way in helping them. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here. Um, thank you for watching and I hope this helped a lot.